Let's hope that it comes through. Alright, so this is one of the final reports on this uh, boiler. Got uh, Place. We've got the flue installed with the barometric. Uh, this being gas fired, the barometric has to be um, double acting. Uh, so not only does it swing in this direction for when it requires uh, excessive draft, but if there is a downdraft, or a blocked flue, um, this will swing out in this direction and this temperature switch will then be wired into the low voltage circuit and uh, trip out and uh, shut down the boiler in the event of a problematic draft situation. Rating plate for the boiler. A little tight squeeze back here. I've got the drip line for the backflow preventer installed for the air vent. These things are notorious for leaking. Um, either because there is a backflow or just because the thing will fail. So I've got this hooked up with a shark bite. Uh, so this can be removed uh, quickly without bringing in a torch and uh, able to uh, get that back in action. So I got the gas line coming down and uh, piped in. And I've got this set in place. Now it's ready to be uh, wired up. All the dramatis personae are here. So let's go through this. It's 120 volt gas valve. It comes with the, the burner. Out of the business end here. <laughs> Should have loosened this up beforehand. Ah, there we go. Don't want to drop that bad boy. Just in here, let's see, in the bottom, you, you can see the orifice that. Uh, the installer in the field drills out uh, according to the size necessary uh, to follow the will allow the proper amount of gas in at the uh, established pressure of about three and a half inches. Um, we've drilled it out to we're going to start with uh, three eighths, and uh, if we need more, we can always drill the hole out bigger. I've got this mounted on the gasket, just for looking in on the, the inside of the flame here. This is the proving switch. These are air tubes which um, go across a differential diaphragm and in here is a little micro switch so the that when the diaphragm um, when there is proper airflow, the diaphragm moves and turns on the switch and allows the uh, flow to continue, the firing to continue. And these primary controls, these flame safety controls, are becoming um, more and more uh, complex. They're doing a lot here. We've got uh, TT here. We've got, um, this would be where we tie into the, um, uh, the block flue switch goes in here. There's even ter terminals for carbon monoxide alarms 
and there are terminals for uh, alarm system. So these are normally, so that can be taken care of. There's already a jumper on the uh, carbon monoxide uh, detector right now, and uh, how it comes. These things have a lot of uh, bells and whistles and features. Uh, this seems to be the trend in the industry to um, improve the uh, um, information uh, sent out to the um, installer and the uh, uh, user so you can get a better uh, idea of what problems, if there's any problems, to be able to solve them. Swings out, typ typical oil burner fashion, and uh, <laughs> not a lot of clearance there, but it misses as good as a mile. I'm going to take a look at the business end of this guy. The refractory rope, refractory target, uh, um, back uh, door refractory, and we've got the spark ignition electrode right there, and this is the flame sense electrode. And the uh, way that's designed, very similar to uh, oil fired flame retention burner. If you know about that, in that the some air directly is fed around the baffle to sort of eddy and keep the flame tighter to the head. You get uh, better combustion that way when that uh, when that is done. Is your what uh, went in there was a rug, as they call it. This uh, plain material there. This was removed. It came out in chunks, unfortunately. So what we did is we stuck it on top uh, underneath here uh, to aid and add a little bit more insulation. Otherwise, it would probably have to be thrown away. It was in such bad shape when it all came out. There's the rear target wall refractory. And uh, there's the pins in the sections where the uh, hot gases pass through and on the way up the chimney. There's another shot of the barometric there in the back. Nice. I'll just leave that off. So I'm going to Tighten that up. Let's see if I can get a underneath the modern burners nowadays. Uh, they all have the electronic uh, igniters, and the old um, iron core stuff is fast fading from the scene. There are a lot of them out there, but they're starting to become there's a shot there of the internals. You've got the squirrel cage. So you don't need a big motor. You're not driving a, a fuel unit. You're just driving a squirrel cage. The motor can be fairly small. There's the uh, saw this at the factory being assembled. They box and then the electronicals and they basically stick the electronicals in it and they squirt this uh, this resin uh, epoxy glue and it, and it just hardens and it's pretty well sealed so all of the components there the high voltage uh, pixie wranglers and ang angry up the pixies this is the of course the ignition electrode and this is the um, flame flame sense electrode or the flame retention there you can see the sort of inner and outer shell, um, the inner shell where the gas is sent and then the outer shell for the uh, airflow to provide the eddy currents to uh, affect the flame retention. Very similar adjusting bands uh, for those of you who know about oil burners. Um, the main advantage of using a power flame over say an atmospheric gas is that you have a much tighter control of your um, uh, flame characteristics if you've got a, 
uh, barometric, which we do, and we've got uh, uh, properly built orifice, which we believe we do, and then of course you got to set this up, and then you set your air band, of course you got to set it up with um, combustion efficiency test equipment at the end, you, you dial it in, you can get pretty good um, burner efficiency numbers out of this. In response to that, in counterman that, of course, is these things tend to be a good bit noisier than the atmospherics. The atmospherics are whisper quiet compared to this thing uh, firing away. We've had some problems over the years trying to get these things uh, quieted down. Now this thing is hooked up and this pipe is full of air, I'm going to do something here which I we shouldn't do at home. And that's we're going to quickly purge this of air. So when I open up this valve, you'll hear the air wishing out. And then as the uh, methane, which is lighter than air, goes through, you should hear a drop in pitch. Let's see if we can get that sound. And there we go. Mmm, smell those more captains. So that is that. This thing is purged. Uh, gas line is installed. Um, the only thing we got to do now is wire and fire.